Hey guys, how is everybody doing? And today we are going to be talking about my favorite comic book movie of all time with the original 1994, The Crow. Like I said in the beginning, we're going to be talking about the original Crow and throughout the next few days I'm going to be talking about its three sequels leading up to its unfortunate remake coming out in theaters this Friday. Soak it all in. So, like I said in the beginning, The Crow is my favorite comic book movie of all time. A lot of people might not know that. This is actually a comic book movie, which, for the longest time, I didn't know. I didn't find out this was a comic book movie until maybe I was 10 years old. For the longest time, I didn't know that. I was like, oh, this is a comic book movie? That's awesome. And I was a huge comic book movie, uh, comic book fan at the time. So, if you like comic book movies, this movie is definitely for you. And I recently did buy, uh, buy and uh, read it, which is actually... Not at all what I was expecting. So, yeah. This movie is just one of my all-time favorites of all time. And I am so glad I get to talk about it. You can tell it's one of my all-time favorites. I put the makeup on and everything. This took me longer than it really should have. Which, I don't like that how long it took me. This took longer than it looks. But, uh, yeah. I am so glad I finally get to be talking about this movie. And, um... The, this is the only Crow movie I've seen. I have not seen the sequels. I have refused to watch them for many years, but now I must take my virginity away from that and finally check them out whenever I get to them. But today, we're going to be talking about the classic, The Crow. Starting off with my positives on The Crow, and one of the reasons I think this movie is so popular and so beloved is because of the performance of Brandon Lee. For those of you who don't know well, for some reason, or if you're just now finding out about this movie and you didn't know the history, is that... Brandon Lee, unfortunately, died on the set of The Crow. Apparently, um, I don't know how this really works, I don't know the backstory on it, but apparently there was a prop gun, and there was a real bullet, or they didn't take the safety precautions on set, and the gun, unfortunately, there was an actual bullet in the gun, and the gun, unfortunately, someone shot it at him, and unfortunately, he died. And it shot him, I believe, right in the abdomen. I believe they keep saying, and he got shot in the abdomen, and he unfortunately died in the hospital while shooting the crow. It is a very unfortunate thing to learn, and it is very sad to learn that, because even when you watch this movie, you're like, wow, Brandon's great in this movie, and he's it's just one of those things where you kind of get choked up and a bit emotional, just and because you know that. It's just like, God, he was great in this movie, and it's unfortunate that he died. And one of the biggest what-ifs I always wondered is what if Brandon Lee never died? What if he never, unfortunately, died on the set of this movie? I wonder where his career would have went from here, because apparently back in 1992 or three, I forget when he agreed to do this, back, back when he first agreed to do this movie, apparently he agreed to do it is because he wanted to step out of the shadow of his father, who is Bruce Lee, one of the most popular martial artists of all time, if not the most popular, and one of the most popular human beings on this planet. And he wanted to step out of that shadow and try to do new things. He wanted to do something that was outside of that, outside of his comfort zone in a way. So he decided to do this movie. And I absolutely love him in this movie just from his performance. He's great. And seeing how good he is in this movie and just seeing how successful this movie ended up becoming, I always wonder what if his career would have looked like. He was already a big name in Hollywood. It's kind of it's kind of similar to Heath Ledger. To where Heath Ledger was already a huge name in Hollywood, but after The Dark Knight came out and his brilliant performance as the Joker, I've always wondered what his career would have looked like from that. Maybe he would have gotten more Oscar-winning roles and all that, but I've always thought that about Brandon Lee in this movie. It's just like, what would his career would have looked like? What, uh, what kind of a star would he have become? What kind of movie star would he be today? And... This movie just proves that how good he was from that. But moving from that and unfor and that unfortunate tragedy, just Br uh, Brandon Lee himself is just great in this movie. I really love his attitude. I really like his like his quirky like moments where he's like messing with the villain. Take your shot, Fun Boy. You got me dead bang. It's like when Fun Boy shoots him through the arm and he's kind of like laughing maniacally and he's just looking through his hole and he starts laughing and just heals up and he's acting like it's nothing. Just like moments like that to where he constantly teases the villains and constantly just says stupid shit at them and basically just messes with them and he knows that he can't die if he gets shot. He's going to heal up immediately. The way that Brandon Lee just performs that uh, those sequences, especially the first time he gets shot and he just heals up and he just looks up maniacally and just smiles at the pawn shop guy. 
just moments like that. Brandon Lee is just so awesome in this role, and just and just seems like he had also just a lot of fun in it. And what I did like about uh, about his performance too is that he did try to step out of his father's shadow. But there are moments here to where he was uh, still able to do some kung fu moments, especially the scene, uh, mostly the scene where he goes up to the villain's hideout and uh, he just fights all the people there. He kind of does kung fu moves on the table when he f when he's fighting people. He does some of that, just like a little moment like that in this movie. But Brandon Lee, he was absolutely amazing in this movie, and I've always wondered what if what would this franchise look like and. What would a Brandon Lee look like today? And something that I'm always a sucker for and is one of my favorite subgenres in movies, and that is a revenge story. And the story here has one of the best stories I have ever watched. And I've seen a lot of good stories. And to this day, I, I have said that this is probably my favorite revenge story. Now, Kill Bill, my favorite movie of all time, that is a revenge story that is very close to being my favorite, but The Crow just has a more emotional one to it, and it has probably the most emotional story ever. I have always contended this is the most emotional story I have ever seen on film. Now, there's probably a lot better ones out there, but this is the one that I always get choked up about watching, and just seeing the story about a man named Eric and his fiance, uh, Shelly, they... It's the day before their wedding, it's the day before Halloween, and uh, these three guys, they break into their home, kill Eric, and unfortunately rape and kill his fiance Shelly, and before he gets thrown out of the window, and one year later, he comes up out of the grave for revenge against these three men, not three men, four men, that unfortunately took his life and his fiance's, and throughout the entire movie, it is a brilliant revenge story, and it is just told awesomely to where we have seen great revenge tales and great revenge stories but nothing ever like this to where you i don't think i've ever seen a revenge story to where someone comes up out of the dead to kill the to kill the people that wronged him to where at this point a revenge story is very cliche in today's world because we get a bunch of those if someone's wrong someone eh, someone someone's loved one gets killed so they go out and they get revenge on them thanks to taken but uh, I just always felt this movie had a good idea, uh, just the story and that comic just had a good idea of telling that story, both the twist on it with the, is that the guy who was actually looking for revenge is technically a zombie. He's technically a dead man. But I just absolutely love this story. I'm a huge sucker for revenge stories. It's one of my favorite subgenres in film, and this movie just has, pro it has the best revenge story I have ever seen. I also think the soundtrack in this movie is pretty good to where it's kind of it had it kind of fits the tone that this movie is going for to where it's very gothic and it's very I don't know what kind of word to describe it but it's very it's a very gothic like soundtrack to where when I've actually listened to it myself and when you li listen to it it has like that kind of depressing like goth feeling to it and that's the very tone that this movie goes for and this soundtrack perfectly captures it to where I just really like it. It's also very heavy metal, and I'm a huge heavy metal fan to where there's moments in here to where it's very heavy metal, especially the whole scene to where uh, Eric goes into the whole clubhouse full of the villains and the music just playing downstairs where there's flashing lights of everything. That is always uh, that song playing during that sequence. I'm, I can't help but just jump up and down and just party, and I, w and I always thought, I wish I could be there. I really wish we had clubs like that here, but we don't. So my town sucks. But... Yeah, it's just a cool soundtrack. I'm a huge heavy metal fan, and I, and I really thought the soundtrack just really captured the tone that this movie was going for. And there's also a Nine Inch Nails song on the soundtrack. I like Nine Inch Nails. I don't know why, but this is something that I noticed, and I always thought it was very poetic that how the villains died in this movie to where they died basically of their own uh, their own like addictions in a way to where you get Tin Tin, who is the knife guy, kills people, it kills people with knives, throws knives, he's very good with them. So how does he die? Well, Eric takes all of his knives, and he just stabs him in all of his major organs. Try hard. Try again. Ah! <laughs> Victims. Aren't we all? So that's fun. And then you get Fun Boy, who is probably my favorite out of all of them. He's the most fun. And, uh, actually, no, Fun Boy's kind of fucked up. But Fun Boy, he is a morphine or drug addict and so how does eric kill him well he just takes all of his needles and he just stabs him in all of his major organs and makes him have a huge overdose and makes him choke on his own blood 
personally, I take the uh, the knife one to die because I'd rather not choke my own blood and die. Oregon and overdose. I just don't like needles. I hate needles. They're terrible. I don't like them. And then you get the leader of the group who is like a huge uh, fire guy. He loves seeing things explode. He loves seeing fire. And this one makes me laugh is that he gets taped down into his car. And, he, and Eric puts a bunch of explosives in his car. And he just sends him to drive in. Then his whole car just explodes up in the river. It, go, it explodes before it goes into the river. That is probably... <laughs> the best kill in this movie and probably the best villain death in it i really like that one of them it's not very poetic or or kind of matches how that villain should have died and the one that's kind of like crazy and the one says i feel like a little worm on a big fucking hook and he just gets thrown out of a window the way that he killed eric which is kind of poetic but i felt there could have been a more creative way for him to die and then not a lot of people notice this, but I've always thought of this in this movie, is that the leader of this movie, I forget his name, but I always thought the main villain, like the big bad of this movie, for some reason when I was younger, I thought he was played by James Franco. I don't know why, that is very weird, but that's all I, that's how I always thought of it for some reason. But the big bad, the main villain of this movie, who has like an incest love uh, thing going on with his sister... The way he dies is that he's on top of a church, and he gets thrown off, and he gets impaled by this devil statue or whatever what i like about that is that before he dies he says nothing happens in this town without i say so hinting that he's kind of like the jesus of this town in a way and he's like the god of the town so he gets to die of the hands of the devil i thought that was kind of cool and the his sister who he has incest relationships with um i always thought it was kind of cool that how she died because she's in love with like eyes or taking eyes out of people the crow pokes her eyes out and kills her and when I was younger, that made me afraid to go near crows. I did, that, that, that scene alone made me scared of crows when I was younger. But now I just don't want to go near them because they can fuck me up. Because they're very fast and they will probably try to bite me. I don't want rabies. This is actually a recent positive for me. Because I have now just recently read the comic book for the first time like three weeks ago. And something that I really like that they changed in this movie that they did from the comic book is I really like how this movie is very toned down in the violence is because in the in the in the comic book that that comic book is very violent and not something I I really expected because I did not expect that at all. In this movie it's a very toned down uh uh action comic book movie and I kind of like that because the way Eric died and the way uh, Shelly's faith ended up coming, I honestly feel this movie should have never been really all that violent. And I felt the filmmakers knew that too, because I'm actually glad that this movie wasn't overly violent. To where the comic book, that it's kind of entertaining because that reason is just like, whoa, seeing people's heads blown off, that's cool. Like, it's cool to see that in the comic, but in a movie, it's just like, the, it, I feel it doesn't need to go that far. And on the recent rewatch I had, I'm like, oh yeah, it's not that violent, and I kind of forgot that it wasn't. So if you're look, if you're a fan of the comic and you're looking for a very violent movie like the comic was, you're not gonna expect that here. But I honestly think that really works for this movie. Moving on to my mixed aspects, and that is the acting from the kid Sarah, the kid that plays Sarah in this movie. Now, I won't really nag about it too much because it is a kid actor, and not a lot of kid actors are great. They're very bland performances not very good to where the just some the some line delivery she has and some of the and especially towards the end of the movie to where she's being kidnapped by the villains and then she's just she knows that eric is supposed to be dead but somehow alive like her acting there it's not overly that good but again i won't nag on it that much and if i if one of my mixed aspects is about a child actor then that just tells you how great this movie is Moving on to my negatives, and it's a very small negative, is that I do think some of the effects in this movie don't age very well, especially scenes to where people are, like, getting thrown out of a window, and they're, like, doing this against a green screen to where you can really tell, but there are moments to where it's not very noticeable, and, and like I said in the beginning, the unfortunate passing of Brandon Lee, they actually had to use CGI to put over stunt doubles or different actors or stuff like that, and it's not noticeable whatsoever. I actually didn't know that until I saw behind the scenes uh, stuff to where they talked about that. I was like, oh, wow, that's not actually that noticeable. And other effects that don't really age that, be uh, that well is when Eric kind of heals up his wounds and all that, especially like in his hand in that one scene. 
some of the effects there don't age very well and they don't look very good but i will but it's a movie that came out during the 90s so i it, some effects from 90s movies don't age greatly but it, again a very small negative and that's and if that's a very small negative again that just tells you how awesome this movie is all in all, guys, I love The Crow. It is one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. It is one of my favorite. Com it is my favorite comic book movie of all time, and it's just one of the best movies. Period for me. I absolutely love this movie. I loved it ever since I was a kid. I have loved it ever since I have grown up to be a teenager. And I guarantee you, until the end of days, I am going to love this movie. And that is why I have been very nervous and scared to check out the sequels. Is because I love this movie too damn much to possibly ruin this movie for me because i've always said that a remake can never hurt or ruin the original but sequels can and i am very nervous to see what the sequels will do or maybe they'll make this movie just e look even greater but i absolutely love this movie and if you have not watched this movie already do yourself a favor and check it out so what do you guys think about the original krell have you seen it what do you think about it? do you like this movie do you not like this movie have you actually read the comic book of the movie let me know in the comments below and we shall talk about it if you like this video like it if you love to subscribe to the bell notification so you will get notified for all of my latest videos and of course until my next video see you all next time